All right, it's right on the clock, and、uh, welcome back. First of all, I just want to say congratulations to all the composers and visual artists for their amazing works, and also the brilliant soloists for their amazing performance on the first of four concerts. Welcome to our concert number five. This concert is featuring clarinetist Jackie Glazer. Jackie, <laughs> welcome to be here.、Um, Jackie and I are long time friends now. She's also a professor at the University of Arizona, Fry Fox School of Music. I met her in my first faculty gathering event. We were、uh, getting food together. <laughs> That was when the first year I was in、um, in Tucson, Arizona, which is、um, three years from from now. So time truly flies. Yeah.、Um, since then, we became good friends and great collaborators.、Um, we did countless projects together. And every single time we work together, we always came up new ideas. For future collaboration, Jackie is an active soloist, chamber musician, orchestral clarinetist, educator, and a true advocate of new music. As a soloist and a founding member of the saxophone clarinet ensemble Du Antruno, she is active in commissioning and performing new music. She has commissioned and premiered over twenty pieces with composers from the U.S., Canada, France, Italy,、um, Argentina, China, and Australia. Her playing is virtuosic with beautiful and clear tones. For her concert, Jackie and I created、um, very different music videos to match the various. Artistic expressions of each piece. We are so excited to share them with you today. All right. Without further ado, let's welcome clarinetist Jackie Glazer. Hi, everyone. Okay, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I still remember meeting you at the food table, and <laughs> our colleague introduced us, and I was like. <gasps> A female composer who's young. I'm so excited. So it, it started off、um, a long, a great friendship and collaboration, and I'm very, very honored to be part of this festival.、Um, it's just been wonderful to hear all these pieces from all over the world, and、um, and then work on them and and create these、um, videos with Kay. She did an amazing job producing them. So I hope you enjoy them. I want to talk a little bit about the program.、Uh, the first piece on the program is called "One Already Made," and it's by、uh, Megan De Giorgio. And this piece is for solo clarinet. I really related to、um, the concept of it.、Uh, Megan says in her program note that it deals with anxiety, intrusive thoughts, doubt, and fear that go along with accepting yourself. And、um, I'm sure she'll talk about the piece later. But it was written in 2020 and premiered in 2021. And I think I really related to the reflective nature of this piece, as we've all been sort of dealing with,、um, you know, solitude in our own way, and also、um, kind of. Going through this period of growth, so、um, I think this piece captures that beautifully, and I'm sure you will enjoy that. The second piece on the program is、um, "On the Arch of a Monochrome Rainbow" by、uh, festival director Kay Ha, and this piece is for、uh, clarinet, fixed electronics, live electronics, and originally multimedia. And it's a really beautiful, evocative piece. It has so much color in it, and.、Um, Kay was able to incorporate the ideas of her original multimedia video to、um, live performance video that we recorded, and I think the effect is really, really incredible.、Um, it really reflects also what's happening in the music and the effects in the electronics, and、um, I'm sure you will enjoy that piece. 
Uh, the third piece on the program is called People of This Place, and it's by Australian composer Felicity Wilcox. This piece is for solo bass clarinet, and I was really just drawn to the sound world that Felicity created in this piece. She really exploited um, all kinds of extended techniques and the range and color of the bass clarinet. Um, this piece is written for the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and um, it's her tribute to them as well as um, to all Aboriginal people. And I think uh, this piece also has a really deep connection to nature and really um, kind of tried to capture that in, in the performance and video. Uh, finally, on the program is a piece for clarinet and electronics, fixed electronics, by um, a um, burgeoning young composer Colin Nasik. It's called Automata, and um, the piece has a lot of energetic sort of rock and roll elements to it. I think uh, Colin captured that really well in the electronics part, but also in uh, use of improv sections within the clarinet part and extended techniques like glissing and um, resonance trills. So it's a really fun, exciting piece. It's a lot of fun to play, and I think it'll be a great closer for the program. So I hope you enjoy uh, this program and look forward to uh, speaking with everyone after the performance. Let's get started.
In creating and offering this piece for performance, the composer and I acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to all Aboriginal people.
All right. <laughs> wow, such a great performances and the wonderful compositions. We hope you all enjoy the music video that we made. Um, let's invite the artists on the virtual stage and you can unmute yourself, I believe so. Yes, you can unmute yourself and let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. All right, so um, if you have questions, you can raise your hand by using the reaction function located on the bottom right of your Zoom window, or you can just go ahead and mute yourself and speak up. Do we have questions from the audience before I start my interview? No, okay. All right, so, um, well, thank you, Jackie. That was just awesome performances, yes. So let's start with you. Um, so as a musician, right, you probably feel really comfortable and just amazing to perform on the stage. That's kind of like our, you know, natural setup, right? So how do you like this new format and new experience as a soloist? I, you know, it's really different. I really miss playing for live audience, but um, getting to work for you, there was another human in the room. <laughs> it was so nice to play for some my family for once um so that that felt really good and then just seeing the final product you know edited together i think um with all the interesting visuals that were created it made it a more um enjoyable experience to kind of watch online and and to feel like you were doing something that was kind of new or um okay. yeah do you feel it's different and then that kind of a rush feeling on a stage instead like right now you can just sit and then relax and enjoy the videos how do you like that this is the most relaxed i've ever been doing <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good yeah. yeah yeah very different also right yeah um all right so let's uh, um ask Megan a question. Megan is a composer of the first piece, one already made. So your piece is so deep. And with all of those uses of just so effective multiphonics, you know, very emotional and the singing in the end, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So what's your approaches in using extended techniques in your composition? Yeah, I love this question um, for this piece in particular, uh, because so this piece was originally um, a commission from another clarinetist, uh, Joanna mccoskey Wiltshire, And I always love to like, if I'm writing a piece for a specific performer, I love to like sit down with them. And the first thing I always ask is like, what do you love about your instrument? What do you love to do on your instrument? And it was just, it was a great conversation because she just gave me this list of things that she she's like, yeah, I like to sing into the instrument and you know, multiphonics and flutter tongue and like all this, I was like, okay, great. Like, this is awesome, you know? Um, so it was such a great experience having that space to kind of like explore and experiment with that world. Um, and having, you know, the feedback from uh, a great player because I'm super not a clarinetist wind player of any sort. Um, so like, so I would say with this piece in particular, um, it was just great to get to, you know, to explore that. And um, I'm also really happy to see that it, you know, it translates to other clarinetists. It, um, I should have led with this, but uh, fantastic performance, Jackie. That was awesome. Um, it was great to, to see it come to life again. And um, yeah, so I would say that's, great. that's kind of my answer. <laughs> yeah, great conversation and amazing performance. Congratulations to your both. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So uh, next question is for uh, Felicity. So are you here? I think so. Hi, Felicity. 
Um, hmm. Okay. Maybe she's not here. Or maybe the internet is not good. Let me just check. Okay, so she's not here. Okay, so uh, let's move on. The last piece, uh, well, if you have questions for my piece and you can ask me. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, let's go to Colin's piece. So Colin, you are a new and uh, young, um, you know, uh, electroacoustic music composer. So how do you like in composing in the electroacoustic, you know, medium? Because I know this is your first piece. Um, yeah, it is something that's still very new and, and alien to me, but I really enjoyed uh, writing this piece in particular. Um, it was a very different sort of workflow, uh, and it's something that's always very much intimidated me. Um, but with this piece, I felt like I was able to get somewhat of a grasp on it and, um, and sort of treating the instrument and, and the electronics as having a dialogue sort of set this basis for going, okay, this isn't so new to me, I can sort of treat the electronics as an instrument in themselves and sort of figure out how to use them there. But I, I like doing it. And uh, I, I would like to continue exploring it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Let's, uh, let me ask you a follow up uh, question. So um, in your piece that they are just so energetic and a lot of things is just so effective on the instruments. Is that because you are also an amazing clarinetist too? Does that help for you to write a piece for your instrument? Um, it's definitely the instrument that I'm most comfortable kind of being a little bit more adventurous mm -hmm. on because I know like the limitations of it. And um, at the time I wrote this, I was, I had been working really, uh, really hard on a couple pieces by Scott McAllister, who uses a lot of mm -hmm. uh, similar techniques to what I use in this piece. And so that was kind of in my mind and, um, and writing something like really fun and, and kind of virtuosic and rock and roll, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great job. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I just, maybe everybody else already knows this, but uh, in Colin's piece and in your piece, Kay, can you tell us a little bit about that airplane and uh, how cool was that and and how can I get one? <laughs> it's in my backyard. Mike, come fly here. No, no, no. So um, that's a location courtesy to um, Pima Air and the Space Museum. And uh, um, we have a connection there and they allowed us to film in there. And they have like, I don't know, probably hundreds airplanes that just, it's, it's a museum, it's an airplane museum. And then there are six airplanes that they have the uh, graffitis on them. So I picked two for uh, my piece and also for Colin's piece. So, so what's the backstory on the graffiti? Um, I don't know. I just love it. <laughs> it's more like an abstract kind of feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah. There is no particular kind of meaning behind it. Kay had told me, she's like, I have this crazy idea. Do you want to do it? I want to film in front of these airplanes. And I'm like, That's, <laughs> it's not like a crazy idea, but I'm going to trust Kay because she usually yeah. knows what she's Hey. Jackie was looking at me like I'm all crazy airplane. Are you talking about like an Air Force or something? I was like, <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me, and I think, uh, I think I saw a comment from Keith Kierkoff about this, uh, that you had such wonderful locations for filming, whether it was that wooded area or in front of those planes. <laughs> Yeah, we did a lot of searching and, uh, you know, because we're thinking about uh, um, we're not really gathering in person and uh, how am I going to kind of showcase the things that um, can take an advantage via this format. So it's like, yeah, we need to make some really cool uh, videos for the show. So that's what we did. Yeah, I have to commend you, Kay, because I think a lot of people use the limitations as an excuse to do poor quality. Right. But it as an inspiration okay we're just gonna think outside the box here and and it's it's so cool i love that none of the videos were in a hall it was like all kind of different <laughs> yeah 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 that's great well i'm glad that you guys all feel good about it i feel good too so thank you <laughs> um all right do we have other questions from the audience 
No? All right. So Meg, we have time. <laughs> yeah. You have a question, Jackie? Yeah, for, for yeah. Megan. So Megan, oh, oh, go ahead. Um, I feel like your piece really exploits exploits the like timbre of the clarinet really well. And then I saw you're a violist. My husband's also a violist. And I thought, oh, that makes sense because we have so much of the same kind of register and you just got so much warmth and lyricism out of it. And um, I don't know if you've written for clarinet bef before or, or not, but I just, I found that really beautiful the way you wrote those phrases. Yeah, I had not written for solo clarinet ever, um, like a couple times in chamber music. But yeah, like I've I've played the you know the Brahms sonatas and and all of that. So and I love the I always have loved like the the similarity and but also differences you know in uh, in repertoire that clarinet and viola share. Um, but like the lyricism of the clarinet is something that I've just like always like kind of gravitated towards. Um, so like those kind of like long like arcing uh, melodies that are that are in that piece definitely like come from from that space but yes and also the range is like very comfortable to me I'm like oh yeah this like you know this nice like low range or this high you know it's like similar enough that I yeah that there's uh there's also plenty about the clarinet that I don't understand but like the the you know the range and the timbre and stuff that I can kind of relate to <laughs> yeah you did a beautiful job I just I, I always appreciate when composer can find the right register to write beautiful solos in that we don't have to like, oh, you know, work so hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, the color is all there. So great job. Yeah, oh, amazing job. Also. <laughs> yeah, great performance, Jackie. Bravo. Yeah. All right. I think it's a good spot for us to end um, our concert number five. And let's take a five minutes break and we'll start our next concert on two sound time. Um, 2.56, which is going to be uh, Eastern time, 5.56. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> 